Amen on this beautiful morning. Our opening hymn is 180, hymn 180. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
working with you. And also you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. We will say together Psalm 23, as found on page 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me in silence to the waters. He delights my soul, and guides me in all my paths with his grace and sacred. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> ago, but one of the ways that he lives on in the lives of his children and extended family and friends are telling his stories, and I have a lifetime of stories from him that I could share with you in sermons through the years, and you'll, you'll hear a few, I know, but when it's Good Shepherd Sunday, there's one story that I've told many times through my years as a priest. It's the story of my father working as a shepherd one summer. It was the Great Depression, jobs were scarce, and summer after summer, through my father's teenage years, he ended up with one lousy job after another, just to put food on the table for his household. So one summer in South Texas, the hot, dusty South Texas, he worked as a shepherd. And he did not have fond memories of being a shepherd. He was not the good shepherd, probably. He talked about how dusty and dry it was. He talked about how uncooperative and stubborn the sheep could be, that they wander off all over the place. He was very, actually, insulting towards sheep. He would talk about how they wouldn't even have a sense to eat right. And so part of his job as a 15-year-old was trying to get sheep to eat right. He could go on and on and on. And so for years, I told sermon stories about how we romanticize sheep, we hear this story about the Good Shepherd, we hear about how we're sheep, and we think we're cute and fuzzy, but in fact, we're stubborn and not very bright and uncooperative with the Good Shepherd. Well, as in many lives, there's a punchline. And for me, it took place in about the year 2000 when Kathy Gray, my wife, who's also a priest, when she and I started dating. And one of the stories she told was about her favorite animal in her life ever, a sheep. <laughs> the sheep was named Barkley. And when Kathy was actually around the same age as my father had been, Barkley was her responsibility. She grew up as a farm girl. And in her case, Barkley was sweet. The sheep was nice. It was a part of her life. The, they could take walks together. That 
Of course, Kathy fed it very carefully, or him, actually. It's not just an it. That, <laughs> that Barkley and she could take walks, they could sit on the grass as uh, Kathy sat under the trees and read. Barkley would curl up there. That Barkley was happy to be washed and cared for. That it was just simply wonderful. Being Barkley, it was wonderful being a shepherd for Kathy, and that one of the things that, in fact, she evaluated uh, property by as we thought about where to live when we moved to Indiana was whether or not she could have three sheep or not. We decided to set that goal aside when we bought our house. So I had these two contrasting views from two people I loved and respected deeply. And as you may know, in the Episcopal Church, we're very happy holding contrasting views, holding them at the same time, because often it's in that action of trying to keep these two contrasting views together that we learn the wisdom of God. And I think this is one of those cases, because one of the things I didn't tell you about Barclay the sheep was that Barclay was an orphan. One of the things that Kathy liked to do when she was a youngster was to watch the adjoining field when the Basque shepherd came in with a flock every year. That people would rent out that field and the Basque shepherd would come, the sheep would live there for a while, and then when all of the nutrition was taken, the flock would move on. So year after year, Kathy would watch uh, the Basque Shepherd and his flock. One year, the Basque Shepherd came over to Kathy with a newborn lamb in his hands and said, this is for you. And Kathy, of course, was very moved and thought it was great and wonderful. And the shepherd, who was very um, to the point, said, if you don't take it, it will die. <laughs> <laughs> because what happens with sheep is if they have twins, they will choose which one is the strongest and, and ignore the other. All the milk and caring will go to the stronger one, the survival of the fittest. And so one of the things shepherds have to do when there are twins born is find another sheep or a human to take care of the orphan. Well, of course, Kathy went home with his sheep, and there was no way she was going to give it up. And that's how Barkley came into her life. You see, I think all of those pieces come together into how we are called to live as Christians. That there are times when we are orphans. There are times when we feel alone, when we feel uncared for. Even as the Good Shepherd even as Jesus Christ has promised to care for us, as we heard in this morning's gospel and so many other places in the scriptures. But in our day-to-day -day lives, sometimes that's hard to know. It's hard to feel. That's hard to really believe is happening. And so what all of us are called to do as Christians is to be a good shepherd to one another, to look for the people who are having an orphan moment or a week, or a year, or life, and be a good shepherd to them. Be Kathy with Barclay. Care for those people, because they need to know from a human being that they're not alone. It won't be enough always to have us, uh, intellectual or even heart knowledge that God is caring for us. Instead, we do need to have people around us caring for us. And that's one of the great things about being part of a congregation like Holy Family, is that I can promise you, if today is an orphan day for you, there are people around you right now who are willing to be a good shepherd for you. Or if two weeks from now, or two years from now, or two decades from now, there are people at Holy Family who will do that. But, part of being a Christian is not saving that kind of love just for people who go to our church or a part of our family, or a circle of friends. Instead, we are called to have that kind of love for the whole wide world. Usually, it's more restricted than that. Usually, it'll just be people around us, people we come across, who are having an orphan day, who are having an orphan moment, 
who are having an orphan life and need that kind of love. You see, it's in, for me, it's in hearing the story of one sheep that transformed my view of all sheep. I can no longer drive by a flock of sheep and think about my dad's words without hearing about the corrective of Barclay, of what that one individual sheep is like. And that's why we try to support our youth working on mission trips. It's that same dynamic. They get to know one, two, three, a dozen people and their whole life changes because they see the whole world differently. They see the human race differently. And we are called to do the same kind of things as adults, to seek out people who change how we see the world, how we see people. To find the Barclays who need love. Find the Barclays who need our attention. Find the Barclays who are otherwise alone. And in that encounter, God will bless us in a way that will shift how we see the whole human race and how we see ourselves. Because suddenly, how God is and who God is is made real in that interaction between ourselves and a person who a little while before might have been a stranger, but now is someone who we're sharing God's love, them giving to us and us giving to them. And of course, that's What's so true is that all of us will be, at times, orphans. All of us, at times, will be in need of some Barclay attention, where we need good shepherds. So we can't just see ourselves as giving to others. We also have to be prepared to receive, and sometimes that's harder. So as we walk through our lives, as we walk through our lives as Christians, as we walk through our lives as family members, as we walk through our lives as friends, as we walk through our lives as people of holy family. We have to be ready to give and to receive, to be the good shepherd and to be a sheep, sometimes dirty and uncooperative, sometimes sweet and hand-fed. But to be able to love and be loved will help us become full human beings and full Christians, more able to love because we receive love, more able to be the good shepherd for the world around us, which needs such people so desperately. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue now on page two with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for postulants and candidates for holy orders. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the Tafflinger, Talbert, and Tannis families, and for those who serve on our dinner groups committee. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Especially remembering those on our prayer list. Hudson, Jim, Laura, Patrick, Heather, Linda, Sue, Kendall, Peter, Aaron, Shane, Carrie, Kathy, Lily, Roberta, Lilo, Beverly. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Especially remembering Ray, Marcel, give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of the actual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May you also come to share in the kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, may, we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and our Lord and our Lord and our Lord and our Lord. We have not joined you with our whole hearts. We have not joined our neighbors to ourselves. We are truly sorry and will not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, who are Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
This is a time of announcements with visual aids. First of all, welcome to you, particularly if you're a newcomer. We have the newcomer clipboards available to you throughout the worship space and the social spaces as well. You can keep the little pamphlet that's on the cover, and if you'd like, you can fill out the card that's beneath it. Then at the end of the service, you can give it to any of the clergy, anyone wearing a blue name tag, an usher, you can put in the offering plate if you're ahead of the game, uh, and we appreciate you doing all those things. This morning, uh, Kathy Scott, our deacon, is having a well-deserved day off, and I appreciate Kathy Gray both filling in for that and then also helping with what's happening after the service, and that is the blessing of seeds. <laughs> My last visual aid. There we go. Bigger. <laughs> what we'll do, and it looks like the rain's holding off, is after we finish singing the last hymn, we'll follow the cross uh, out the doors and down to the outdoor chapel. From the outdoor chapel, we'll walk a few steps over to bless the community garden and then return to the chapel to bless seeds and plants for anyone who has brought those uh, to church today. Uh, if, so if you don't want to keep walking, you're welcome to just stay in the chapel and we will return to the building for coffee and all that if you don't want to take the entire trip. One of the fun things that will happen that I hope you'll have your cameras out for and put on Facebook and all, is the children get to scatter wildflower seeds along the tree line, particularly around the chapel. And hopefully those will uh, be beautiful in a couple months or so, but also of course it's in part teaching the children uh, about how we care for the world around us. I think those are all the logistics on that, but I'll announce things as we go along. Few things coming up this week on Tuesday evening. The Brotherhood of St. Andrews is sponsoring a men's fellowship gathering at the Chapman Tap. That's at 7 p.m. On Saturday, the youth group is hosting a spaghetti dinner and silent auction. If you've been following on Facebook or Instagram, you can see some of the uh, baskets that will be auctioned off. Pretty impressive uh, group of things available. Both those events are good things to bring friends to. Coming up on May 16th and 13th, we'll be doing baptisms at this service. If you or someone you know is interested in baptism, you can contact myself or the church office and we'll make sure you get to be part of that as well. That's right. Time now for the offertory. So walk in love as Christ loved us and died for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. of love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh Jesus your son for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error and truth out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming, Lord. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with all your saints, we may, may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I am the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. A reminder and an invitation that all Christians are welcomed and encouraged to receive communion in the Episcopal Church.
On page four, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have led us to spiritual view, the assignment of the body and blood, send us now to the world of peace, and grant us strength and courage to love us and serve you, with gladness and gentleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin and to true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our dismissal hymn is 708.